Okay, so remember a physical change is um, involves a change where the substance doesn't change um, its chemical makeup, it just goes from one form to another. So for example, um, melting or freezing um, uh, condensation, which is when it goes from a gas to a liquid. Um, and sublimation, that might be a new word, is when it goes from uh, a solid directly to a gas. Uh, dissolving is also uh, considered a physical change. A chemical change, however, is when the original substance is changed into one or more new or different substances with different properties. So chemical changes that you are probably familiar with are burning, uh, cooking, and rusting. Um, evidence that we have a chemical change uh, happening is summar summarized in this chart. For example, um, when you mix two clear liquids together, you get a new color form, or um, anytime you get a new color formed, that's a good evidence of a chemical change happening. Heat or light is produced or absorbed. Uh, bubbles are formed. So what, what makes bubbles in a liquid? Anyone? Gases, like gases, like if you put vinegar in baking soda, and then yes, exactly, bubbles. exactly. So uh, bubbles indicate that you've got a new uh, gas being formed. Um, when you mix two liquids together and you get a solid formed, that's called a precipitate. That is also evidence of a chemical change. Um, and chemical changes are generally. Uh, difficult to uh, reverse. There's some, you likely have to do another chemical change to get the, the substances back. Um, what else do I hear? Okay. So that brings me to uh, the principle call or the law, which I used uh, lightly. Uh, call of conservation of mass. Now this principle states that in any chemical reaction or chemical change, the total mass of the substances reacting equals the so total mass of the new substances created. Uh, so there's no, there's no mass loss, okay? Um, this was discovered by Antoine Lavoisier in the 18th century. You don't really need to know too much um, about how it was found. He did a whole lot of reactions in the similar way that we are going to, I'm going to do a demonstration for you today, um, probably with a little bit more accuracy than uh, what we're using in my kitchen this morning. But uh, it, it's his is his experiments sh showed him that when you weighed the mass of the reaction a reactant and then the mass of what you got after you did the reaction the masses were equal okay so let's let's do a little demonstration here I don't know if you can see see my kitchen counter So what do I have here? Can you see it? Vinegar. Vinegar. And? Baking soda. Baking soda. So we are going to mix some vinegar and baking soda in my uh, handy uh, shaker here. So I'm going to first way
the mass of my products here, or my reactants. So, I've got vinegar. I'm going to close the container. Whoops. Hmm. So, uh, we've got vinegar in this container. The whole container here weighs 202 grams. Write that down. 202 grams. You see my handy little uh, balloon here? What do you think the balloon is going to be used for? Uh, pressure? <laughs> Not quite. So what happens when um, you react baking soda and vinegar? Gas what do you get? Formed. Gas is formed. And where does the gas go? Up, like out of the water? Yeah, up. And it yep. goes into the atmosphere, right? Yep. So we can't accurately weigh what goes into the atmosphere. So I'm going to trap it with the balloon. Hopefully, I'm going to trap a lot of it, most of it. So I've got um, here, I've got, just want to make sure. We're being as accurate as possible here. My handy kitchen scale. We've got eight grams of um, baking soda. So eight grams of baking soda. This whole thing here is 201. So I have a total mass of What's the total mass? 210 grams. So I've got 201 and oh. eight. Yes, eight. So 209, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very close. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to put the baking soda into the container. Whoops. Try not to drop. and then try and put the balloon over top. Here we go. Oh, there it goes. Can you see it? Yep, perfect. Not too bad. Just to be completely accurate, I'm going to take the little paper that I weighed it on and put it on there so that it's all there. And we see that we have 208 grams. Now, we expected to see that the masses were exactly equal, right? What might explain the difference that we see here? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So what might explain the difference? Mm -hmm between 208 and 209, which, which is what we expected. How fast did I get that balloon on there? Did I get it on there as soon as the reaction started? Like maybe like one or two seconds after. 
Yeah, I don't know. so there's probably a, likely a bit of gas escaped before I got the, the balloon on there, right? Yeah. But we are pretty close. So that demonstrates that the mass of the total system doesn't change. Okay. So how can we use this to describe chemical reactions? Well, we're going to use this um, this law, this understanding, to make sure that we have uh, balanced the number of atoms of each element in the reactants with the uh, with the atoms, the number of atoms in the product. So, if you take a look over here, I've got a couple of examples written down. We have carbon reacting with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide. Notice we have one atom of carbon here and two atoms of oxygen here to produce, to produce one atom of carbon and one atom, uh, or sorry, two atoms of oxygen. So the number of atoms on the reactant side of the reaction equals the number of atoms on the product side. They're just rearranged. Okay, they're just there in different forms. Similarly, we have two atoms of hydrogen reacting with two atoms of chlorine to produce two molecules of hydrogen chloride. Okay, or if you see this uh, below here, where it says a, a, AQ, this would be hydrochloric acid, okay? So we show, we balance this out by putting a big two in front of the molecule of hydrogen chloride because we know from our uh, naming practice that hydrogen is a plus one ion and chlorine is a negative one ion so they combine in a ratio of one to one. But here we have two atoms of hydrogen and two atoms of chlorine, which would mean that we make two molecules of hydrogen chloride. Okay, so now we have two atoms of hydrogen on this side, two atoms of chlorine as well, which balances out on the reactant side. Does that make sense? in the way that I explained it, or do you have questions? We okay? Need to hear some voices because I can't see faces. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah? Okay, so hopefully if it's not quite clear now, it will become clear uh, when you go to the uh, activity that I have for, for you. So just a bit of uh, terminology you have on the left of the equation, you have your reactant, and then you have an arrow pointing to what's created in the product. Okay. The uh, little symbols that you see some, sometimes as subscripts have uh, a meaning. If you see an S, it means solid, an L liquid, G is gas, and AQ means the substance is dissolved in water. Okay, remember dissolving doesn't, is a physical change, it doesn't change the chemical properties of the uh, substance. Mm -hmm. Okay, we will get to uh, more of this equation stuff, um, probably Monday or Tuesday. Uh, I will post some practice and some more uh, probably YouTube videos um, because they are equipped a little bit better than I am um, at home and they do a pretty good job of explaining stuff. Um, I'll be posting a whole lot of practice and hopefully after today's activity, you will understand um, a little bit more about why we're doing it.
So talking about the activity, I'm going to share my, a different screen with you. Okay, so I'm going to post this uh, FET simulation with a, uh, a worksheet for you to do. Uh, you're going to go to the introduction and you're going to be given a reaction. Now in any reaction you need to have at least one molecule of each of the substances right, for the reaction to occur. In this case though, we know that the number of atoms on this side need to equal the number of atoms on this side. But we don't have that right now, do we? How many atoms of nitrogen do we have on the reactant side? One, two, two. Nitrogen is one of those special. Um, it's a it's a member of a special group of elements that, in their natural state, go around with a partner. They're called the diatomic elements, and there's a group of seven of them. Let me see if I can remember. Nitrogen hydrogen and oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, iodine, and bromine are all diatomic. So whenever you see a reaction with any of those seven, you know that they're all going to have that subscript two. So that means they have two atoms of nitrogen together and two atoms of hydrogen together. So here we have two. But on this side, how many atoms of hydrogen do we have? How many, how many blue balls do we have on this uh, side? One. one. Just one, right? So we need, we need to have two because we have two over here. Mm -hmm. And they don't, it don't go, doesn't go anywhere. Doesn't disappear. So we need to have one more. The way we do that is we add one more of this whole unit on this side. Okay, so now we have two molecules of NH3, which is ammonia. But what does that mean for the hydrogens on this side? How many hydrogen atoms do we have on the product side? Three. We have three within one mo molecule, right? But we have mm -hmm. two of those molecules. So we have three here and three here. So in, in total, we have six, but on this side, we only have two. So we can't create um, four atoms of hydrogen out of nowhere. They have to come from somewhere. So we need to have three more, three total molecules of hydrogen on this side. Six okay. atoms, right? Two, four, six atoms on this side. Mm -hmm. Two, four, six atoms on this side. Right. Okay. okay, so that's the general premise of what you're going to do um, after we end our time together. Are there any questions at this point? Uh, no. no. You have a question, Pete? Yes, no. No? No? Okay. So as you're working, if you come up with uh, a question, feel free to reach out on uh, Google Hangout and connect with me and I can definitely jump on and help you out. Okay, so I will go over and we will post. We will post uh, the worksheet for you and the link to that assignment. Oh, I'm gonna move this. Ooh, internet connection is a little slow. So we'll have this all done by Tuesday. Hmm? 
when again? Tuesday. Tuesday, okay. Tuesday, yeah. So between now and Tuesday, I hope to have this finished um, and the rest of the balancing um, practice as well as your naming quiz. Um, I'm gonna work the rest of today and uh, probably into the weekend to figure out what next week's schedule will look like. Mm -hmm. um, and once I have that all figured out, you will find that posted on your Google Classroom, okay? And I will update the invitations to any of the live, um, live classes on Google Calendar. Okay. All right. So I will assign this now. Hopefully, there we go. Uh, any questions for me? All right. So we will sign off.